Hello everyone, once again, and welcome to uh, the video where we'll be looking at a worked example as well as an exercise on working through the components of gravity. Okay, so uh, as the worked example question suggests, a block on an inclined plane experiences a force due to gravity, Fg, of 137 newtons straight down. If the slope is inclined at 37 degrees to the horizontal, what is the component of the force due to gravity perpendicular and parallel to the slope? Well, step one, we're going to have a look at the components first. So we know that for a block on a slope, we can resolve the force due to gravity into components parallel and perpendicular to the slope. Now the parallel component, fgx, is equal to fg sine theta, and uh, the perpendicular component, which uh, is, is fgy, is equal to fg cos theta. Now if you look at the calculations there, okay, we already know that the inclined plane is, is at an angle of 37 degrees, which is the same angle we need to use for calculating the components. So for the uh, parallel component, fgx, all right, fg sine theta, which equals to 137 times sine 37 degrees, which gives us a force of 82,45 newtons. All right, we do the same for the perpendicular component, fgy, which is fg cos theta. We plug it in there, and we get an answer of 109,41 newtons. Now, though that is not our final answer, our final answer needs to be stated in words. So, uh, for step three, the component of FG that is perpendicular to the slope is FGY, and that is equal to 109,41 newtons in the negative Y direction. Okay, because it's going down. Now, the parallel component all right, um, it should not be perpendicular to the slope. It should be uh, the component of gravity that is actually parallel to the slope is FGX, and that is 82,45 newtons, and that is in the negative X direction as well. Okay, perfect, quite a straightforward example. Okay, and um, we're going to have a look at an exercise now on the next slide. Exercise 2.3, forces and motion. So uh, let's have a look at number one. So number one, uh, a boy pushes a shopping trolley, weight due to gravity of 150 newtons with the constant force of 75 newtons. A constant frictional force of 20 newtons is present. So for the first question, draw a labeled force diagram to identify all the forces acting on the shopping trolley. So we'd uh, draw the trolley, all right? We could draw an actual trolley, all right? Sort of like that, the surface, or we can just draw like a block, okay, to represent the trolley. Okay, there we go, that's the trolley. Okay, and we know there's a gravitational force so there's FG there. We know there's a normal force as well, right? There we go. And we also know that there is a force applied that way. Okay, we can use F app, force applied. And we know there's also a frictional force as well, a force of friction. All right, so what we can do is we can actually say that the, the FG is equal to 150. We can actually write 150 here, equals 2. We can also write the uh, constant applied for of 75 newtons. We can say that's equal to 75 newtons. And we can say that the frictional force is equal to 20 newtons if we so choose to. All right, that's for the first one. Let's have a look at B. B says, draw a free body diagram of the forces acting on the trolley. Okay, now we're going to do something very similar. All right now, remember for free body diagram, uh, the object is depicted as a dot. Okay, so now the same thing. Arrows are just drawn outwards. Normal force. All right, 
FG, which is gravity, which was equal to 150 newtons. Oops, I forgot to put that in the first one. Let me just see if I can write it in nice and small. There we go, newtons. All right, we had a constant applied force of 75 newtons. Okay, that was F app. All right, and then we had a 20 uh, newtons frictional force. Okay, perfect. There we go. And there we go. Our first two questions are done. Quite simple. All right, let's have a look at C, the third and final question for question one. This one is determine the resultant force on the trolley. Now, from grade 10, we remember that resultant force, all right, F resultant, remember, F resultant force is all the forces added up together. In this case, the only uh, forces that uh, would uh, affect the resultant force is the force applied, all right, plus the force of uh, friction. All right, plus the force of friction. There we go. Okay. So I still have a bit of space here. So we know the force applied was 75, right? Plus friction was 20 uh, newtons going in the opposite direction, hence the minus, all right? And therefore the resultant force is equal to 55 newtons to the right. Remember, the force is a vector quantity. Okay, so we have to put a direction because the resultant force is positive. We took right as positive, all right, because it's going forward, okay, or forward as possible as positive, so 55 newtons to the right would be our answer. And there's question one, complete. Let's have a look at question two now. Question two is a donkey experiencing a gravitational force of 2,500 newtons is trying to pull a cart forced due to gravity of 800 newtons with a force of 400 newtons. The rope between the donkey and the cart makes an angle of 60 degrees to the cart. The cart does not move. All right, the cart does not move. All right, fantastic. So let's go have a look at the first question. Question number A, okay. Draw a free body diagram of all the forces acting on the donkey. So the donkey for number 2A would be depicted as a dot, okay. The dot, dot donkey, okay. And of course, the donkey also has a normal force. First thing, okay, there is a gravitational force acting on the donkey as well, which is keeping his feet on the ground. Okay, so Fg on this side, we know that was equal to 2,500 uh, newtons. Okay, and then over here, I have 30 degrees. Okay, 30 degrees here, and okay, and this is we'll call this F1, okay, we know that this is the force, all right, of the cart, all right, on the donkey. Force of the cart on the donkey, okay, uh, which we know is 30 degrees, all right, down uh, from the horizontal. All right, that's what they tell us. All right, that's what they tell us in the question. All right, so that's the free body diagram of the donkey. Now for the second one, uh, B. B, they ask us to draw a force diagram for all the forces acting on the cart. So we draw our surface. Here we draw our cart. All right, so we know, just like there's that force going down, we know that the rope is obviously pulling this up. So we'll denote this as F2. All right, we know there is a gravitational force here and a normal force here. Okay, and then we also know that because the donkey is trying to pull the cart, there must be a force of friction. All right, and that is a force diagram of all the forces acting 
on the uh, cart. Okay, now C. C says, find the magnitude and direction of the frictional force preventing the cart from moving. All right, so the cart is not moving. All right, so this means there is static friction only. All right, we, uh, we know that the frictional force acts in the, x in the x direction only and will be equal to the x component of the force applied to the donkey. Okay, the direction will be in the opposite direction that the donkey is pulling, of course, because friction acts in the opposite direction of the force applied. Okay, so therefore, if we had to calculate it, we'd say frictional force, okay, all right, force of friction would be uh, equal uh, to the force applied, remember, for the x component, all right, force applied would be, uh, force applied, all right, uh, cos theta, all right, and we know the force applied was uh, 400, all right, it tries to pull the cart with 400 newtons, okay, and the angle of the rope, all right, to the cart is 30 degrees, okay, we're trying to find out the horizontal component, okay, and then that should give us the answer of 346 comma four one newtons okay in the member opposite direction this is in the opposite direction to the donkey okay so let's have a look at that again so remember he he's trying to pull a cart all right with the force of 400 newtons they want the magnitude and the size of the frictional force. There's only static friction here because the cart is not moving, okay? And it is um, equal to the x component of the force applied, okay? And therefore, we sub that in. Force of friction is equal to the force applied times cos theta. Okay, perfect. And that is an exercise on forces and motion using the components, all right, of gravitational force. Okay, and that is it for this video. That's all we have time for. Stay tuned for our next video for where we will be attacking Newton's first, second, and third laws.